Welcome back. In the first topic, we discussed matter and the different states of matter. We talked about the difference between solids, liquids and gases. In this topic, we're going to discuss some of the different types of matter that we find around us. In particular, we're going to distinguish between elements, compounds and mixtures. Let's start with the first one. Let's start by having a look at elements. You'll remember in the last topic, we discussed your periodic table and the fact that you'll need it with you all the way through this journey. Popped it down in the additional resources again, just in case you forgot to grab a copy. Grab it, download it, save it, print it, make sure you've got it with you. So I'm sure if you've had a close look, you'll realize it's called the periodic table of the elements. And that's because every substance that you can see on this periodic table is defined as an element. It's one single type of atom. For example, if we look right up in the top left corner, there I've got H, the first element. This element is hydrogen. So that is an example of an element, any individual type of atom that we use to make up a material. Element one, that was hydrogen. What if I pick a different number off the periodic table? Element 26, for example, if you look it up, you'll find it's iron. So iron metal would be an example of an element. So that's elements covered. So far, so good. Let's then have a look at a compound. A compound is what we get when we take more than one element, so two or more, and then chemically unite them. We join them together to make a new material. If we do that, we would have a compound. So for example, my periodic table again, if I take some hydrogen and take some oxygen from my periodic table, so these are the two elements I've taken, and then I chemically join them together, create bonds between them, in particular two hydrogens and an oxygen, I can make water a new and completely different chemical to the hydrogen and oxygen that I started with. So you can see there water, H2O, we call that the molecular formula of water, H2O. It defines the simplest structural unit of that material. So two or more atoms joined together to make a new material, that's a compound. How do we communicate what that compound is? We use a molecular formula which shows how the atoms join together to make that material. So that's elements and compounds defined. People sometimes have a bit of trouble in the early going differentiating between compounds and mixtures. So once again, a compound is what we get when we chemically unite, chemically bond two or more atoms together to make a new material. Whereas a mixture is what we get when we simply place two or more chemicals in the same space, mix them all together. But there's no chemical change. You are not chemically bonding or uniting those two materials together. Let's have a look at an example, one that's literally all around us. If we look at the air, around us. Uh, couldn't blame you for thinking that maybe air is a lot of oxygen gas, after all, that's what we use it for, we need that oxygen, breathe it to live. But air is actually mostly nitrogen gas, it's just under 80% nitrogen gas, so that's the primary component. But there is oxygen gas mixed in there as well, there's also carbon dioxide from when we exhale, there's also water, water vapour, there's small amounts of argon, of methane, all kinds of other trace amounts of gases. And these are all mixed together, they're all in the same space, the same air that you and I are breathing right now. But they're not specifically joined or connected to one another, just mixed together, that's all. That makes them a mixture. Let's try some examples together to make sure that we've got the right of this. So here I have three different substances. I have sodium chloride, we have good old table salt. I have a bowl of vegetable soup, and I have a gold bar. So if we go through each of those, try and figure out, is it an element, a compound, or a mixture? If we start with the table salt, you may have picked up the small hint that I gave you. I said it's sodium chloride. If you have a look at your periodic table and find element number 11, way over on the left, you'll find that that's sodium. If you have a look on the other side, the second last column, you'll find element number 17, that's chlorine. If table salt is sodium and chlorine joined together to make a new material, that makes it a compound. When we look at our second example there, our vegetable soup, the primary ingredient in soup of course is water, and into that we've got our vegetables, our carrots, our onions, our potatoes, whatever else you might fancy. If it's a packet soup, add to that MSG, sugar, salt, flavours, colouring, preservative, whatever the case may be. All these things mixed in together in the same place, that makes it a mixture. The final example that we have there, a gold bar, well, we wish we had a gold bar. 
If you again scout around your periodic table, find element number 79, you'll find that that element is gold. So our gold bar is made of a single pure element. That'll do us for this topic. Get down to the discussion forums again, discuss some common examples around you that you might not be sure of with your peers. In the next topic, we're going to discuss chemical changes. We're going to get into what chemistry is really all about.